Hello everyone, Savella Morgan here. Thank you for stopping by and listening to another episode. Before we get started, I would like to thank my sponsors and my supporters. A great big thank you to Morgan Air Conditioning, Sales, Service, and Installation, serving Tampa, Florida, and the surrounding areas. Morgan Air Conditioning can be reached by calling 813-500-7765. That's 813-500-7765. Thank you, Morgan Air, for recognizing the vision of 21st Century Hannah. Your sponsorship is greatly appreciated. I would also like to thank Alba Digital Media. Alba Digital Media created my childlessnotbychoice.net website and they produce my podcasts. It is wonderful to have the same company creating my website and producing my podcasts. Thank you, Alba Digital Media, for making me look good and sound good. To contact Alba Digital Media for your website or podcast production needs, visit www.albadigitalmedia.com. That's www.albadigitalmedia.com. Next, I would like to thank Devoted, the musical duo who created my theme music. When I first approached Devoted for possibly creating a theme song for my podcast, I did so because of the pure talent I have witnessed from Devoted. Thank you, Devoted, for all the wonderful music you create for so many people. Devoted can be reached by emailing devotedministries at gmail.com. That's devotedministries at gmail.com. Finally, I would like to thank the owner of Edinburgh Dusters out of Edinburgh, Scotland, for his artistic suggestions on my websites and on my social media content. Your timely assistance in helping me during the initial stages of building this platform is truly appreciated. If you would like to help create awareness for and about the Childless Not By Choice community by becoming a one-time or ongoing sponsor, please contact me via email at civilla at civillamorgan.com. That's civilla at civillamorgan.com. As a sponsor, your product will be advertised to a global audience via this podcast, as well as my multiple social media platforms. Thanks again for listening, everyone. Now, on to the show. I feel like a fraud. That's what I told my brother, and that's what I told a very good friend of mine. It was a few days after Mother's Day here in the United States, And I was afraid to verbalize it to anyone else because I wasn't sure what the the reaction would would be, you know, what what kind of reaction I would get. How could I possibly be two years into building a platform created to help women who are childless not by choice feel better about themselves, feel better about their lives? Many of you know my byline, living a joyful and relevant life although childless, not by choice. It all started a few days before Mother's Day, as it always does. But I thought I had gotten over the feelings of loss enough to make it through Mother's Day without feeling like a second-class citizen when the pastor asked all the mothers to stand, and I remained seating. seated. <laughs> it's a feeling only childless, not by choice women could understand at least the ones who are not over the pain. Because I hear tell there are childless, not-by-choice women who are quote-unquote over it. My brother said to me, maybe one day you will realize how many people you have helped. He just could not understand how I could feel this way after I just told him how the platform was finally taking a hold and growing. My good friend said, You are not a fraud. Your primary audience are the women who feel the way you do. How could you talk to them if you did not understand how they feel? Then she recounted the multiple organizations and platforms that were created out of someone's grief. I understood what she was saying, what she was trying to do, 
I understood what my brother was saying. But will there ever come a day when my heart will be okay with remaining seated while all around me mothers stand up and accept their due recognition? How could I possibly encourage childless not by choice people when my heart still breaks on Mother's Day? It's not that bad the other 364 days of the year. And I do not want to dim the light of recognition for mothers. After all, I have my own mom, whom I love very much. I'm so thankful for her. But the fact is, the way God answered my prayers, my begging, my deal-making, was to not answer. The healing didn't come. The adoption didn't come. The twice-tried adoption didn't come. Honestly, I would have been okay with never marrying if I'd had the child. But to hit a brick wall every turn I took, it was hard. How am I supposed to convince other women that we can live relevant and joyful lives when I still have questions? How could I not be a fraud? And how dare I get pushback for creating a conversation to help women like me by people who do not really understand. Some even have the nerve to feel offense and discomfort about my platform. Of course, others' dis discomfort and offense will not stop me from my quest to create conversation. It would be like my being uncomfortable and offended around people who have children. That makes no sense. Another thing I will not do, and I will compel you not to do, is hide out in the shadows of life. Don't pretend you are fine with your life, vicariously living through friends and family, trying to belong to a lifestyle you really do not, in an effort not to be lonely. Don't get me wrong, if you have friends and family with children whom you love and who love you, you should be at those games, birthday parties, and recitals. But be there because you are comfortable enough with the life you have created for yourself, and not because you would otherwise be home eating a TV dinner and watching reruns of old movies. Create a life for yourself. Create a schedule that includes these wonderful people, but that is not exclusive to these wonderful people. That way, you're not always turning up like a bad penny. <laughs> And I mean that with the utmost respect, because I'm in the boat with you. Remember that. You know, one human selfishness can often make us believe that everything must be okay across the street because everything is okay where we are. It is difficult to always realize that life can be very different for our neighbor up the street or even our childless family member. After all, your own life is busy enough. You don't have time to worry about anyone else, right? In fact, if they don't have children, it's probably because they didn't want any. If she's not married, there's probably something wrong with her. I mean, doesn't everybody want a family? So, as I sit here, having survived yet another Mother's Day, I did something slightly different. Instead of going to my home church, I went to church with my mom. Next year, I will try again to do something different as I had suggested you do on Mother's Day. If it happens, I'll let you know. You know what else my good friend told me? She said, the fact that you were willing to go to church with your mother, even though you had to sit while so many other women stood, makes you a good daughter. You put your feelings aside to be with your mom. That is love. Hmm. Well, my act of love does feel much better than my feelings of fraud. So, am I a fraud? The words of encouragement from my brother and from my good friend, they went a very long way. Because... Be before I had said anything to them, I truly felt like a fraud deep on the inside, wondering how I could continue on helping, 
podcasting, talking, encouraging, when deep down I felt like a fraud. But after having these two separate conversations with two people I love and respect so much, their words of encouragement really, really helped me, and I really appreciate them, and they know. I always tell them that. So, if you think back to some of the episodes where I've mentioned that it is important to be surrounded by people who love you and whom you love, this is the exact reason why. Because when I felt like a fraud, at the times when I feel low, I know exactly who I can talk to. Do you have friendships like that? If you do, it's an awesome thing because it takes time and cultivation. I've known my brother all my life, and this friend that I told you about, I've, we've been friends for 25 or 30 years. That's cultivation. It's never too late to cultivate, and so if you don't have those types of friendships, start cultivating them, not out of your own necessity, but it'll be just as good for the other person. And it takes time, and you're going to have a lot of false starts. I've had false starts, even as an older person versus being in my teens and 20s. When I say older, I'm not older. (laughs) But you know what I mean. It takes time to cultivate friendships. And especially as we get older, we are, well, let me speak for myself. I'm a little bit more picky about who I hang around with and spend time with because life is short. And I'm not up for the drama. So I have a handful of friends. But they all mean the world to me in their own way. And then I have tons of acquaintances and people I know and people who know me. But the friends, the people I can tell that I feel like a fraud, I can count on one hand. So cultivate those friendships and those relationships. It may surprise you where those friendships come from. Don't just assume that the people that you think are going to be the ones that are there for you are the the friends that you will cultivate. It doesn't always work that way. Be open, but use common sense. And I guarantee you will get one or two good friends out of the whole deal. At least I hope that for you. Anyway... Thank you for visiting and listening in to another episode of Childless Not By Choice. Remember, I recently changed the name from uh, 21st Century Hannah to Childless Not By Choice for the podcast. The platform is still 21st Century Hannah, but the podcast is now called Childless Not By Choice. And um, that was after a year of battling back and forth with my podcast producer about making the name change. And of course he was right. Now um, you can more easily search and find the podcast on iTunes. And the Google ranking is way up there now. Last time we checked, I was number one in the United Kingdom on Google, and I think number two or three in the United States on Google. So not too shabby. If only I would listen to my podcast producer a little bit more often, right? So I really appreciate those uh those rankings. That's a that's a way cool thing. It tells me that the platform is is working and in fact, I get several requests to join the uh closed Facebook group Childless Not By Choice after the group had been stagnant for so long and a stagnant number for so long. Um over the last couple of weeks I've had requests come in from all around the world uh for people asking to join so You come on in as well. The only thing is, you have to be childless, not by choice. That's the one thing we all have in common in that group. I do have another group for people who are not childless, not by choice, but want to support, you know, the the platform. And um, so that's supporters of the childless, not by choice platform. Just do a search for it on, on Facebook. You'll find it. But if you don't, let me know. Uh, Feel free to direct message me on Facebook or Twitter. Um, or you can email me at Savilla at SavillaMorgan.com. That's Savilla at SavillaMorgan.com. And of course, all of my information is, um, 
in the show notes of the um, of this episode. So I'm on. Uh, I have two Instagram channels. I have uh, one is at Savilla One, which is my private, you know, page. And there's at Joy and Relevance, and at Joy and Relevance is the one I use for particularly child is not by choice um, content. Um, I'm also on Pinterest, love Pinterest, and um, I have thousands of pins over there, including a child is not by choice um, pin page. And I actually have a page that I created um, with pictures of children from all around the world as a great reminder that we have... um, we have we have work to do, not just because we're a child is not by choice. We still have work to do in society. We are still an important part of society. So never you fear. Um, I always say that I, I want to somehow, someday match up the child is not by choice demographic with the parentless abandoned, underprivileged portion of society. All of this on a global level. So in the meantime, as you do your own part to help those underprivileged children, uncared for children, abandoned children, street children, do your part, but I know eventually this platform will cover both portions of society. And... um, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I just know it will. That's all I can say. <laughs> sounds big, right? It sounds it sounds really big. But um, anyway, in the meantime, do your own part. I'm doing my part. Let's just, you know, let me know what you're doing um, to help children in your area. As I always say, just make sure that um, you are welcomed where you are. I never want a childless, not by choice woman to be scorned. And um, so just, just of course, protect your heart and uh, use common sense. And uh, let's keep listening here for ideas from other women. And of course, join the group. And then you can also speak with other women from around the world. And uh, so that's just something to think about. Before I go, though, I really want to also give a shout out to Carla from Colorado. She emailed me uh, maybe a week or so ago, and and she sent me, you know, just a thank you that she found the podcast. She was so happy to find the podcast, and she actually sent me a blog post that she had written. So, Carla, thank you so much for reaching out. I appreciate it. Thank you for the wonderful email and sharing your blog with me. As I read her blog, I just laughed because there was so much of me in there. Um, The experiences that she suffered and, you know, the friends that she has. This one particular friend that really just kind of just fixed a particular situation. So um, I just I just saw a lot of uh, me in there. And I'm sure that um, there's a little of each of us in there. So thank you so much, Carla. I really appreciate that. And of course, if you want to reach out, do so. Uh, my emails, Sevilla at SevillaMorgan.com. You know, as I said, social media, just about every p- platform that you can think of. Um, no excuses. Reach out. I'll give you a shout out. <laughs> and thanks again for listening. In the meantime, do the best you can where you are with what you have. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.